Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. So today's upload is actually a re-upload of a video that was uploaded about a week ago. Uh, there was a glitch at around a 5 minute mark I had to uh, fix and uh, so I did that and I wanted to give you just a better quality. It wasn't up for a long time, maybe a day, but um, you know, if you're watching this video again, you already watched it that one time it was uploaded. Uh, don't have to watch it obviously, just maybe consider giving a like and thank you for understanding. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are having a fantastic day. So, as you could tell by the title of this video, we will be talking about what effects will a cold spring have on winter. Now, for those of you that may be wondering, oh, it's too early, it's not, you know, it's not really uh, time for this yet. Well, you know, spring has been a relatively chilly one. And with spring being over in uh, less than two days, meteorologically starts, summer starts June 1st. I decided it's appropriate since this won't change. This research that I present to you here won't change even if it's October or you know. Um, it's just this is consistent with at whatever time of the year it is. It's not really a prediction or an outlook. It's just speculation. Um, it's, I'm just going to be showing you historical springs that have been cold and what the out and that, what the outcome was. This is not really a prediction as of what this winter is going to be. It could give us maybe a little bit of an outlook as to what we ex could expect, but um, I'm not even going to factor it into my final forecast, or, or my winter preliminary forecast, as it, it usually just, usually these things just don't come together to fruition as uh, as, as we'd like, and they're just here to for the fun of it, so if you guys would like to subscribe to this channel, please consider doing so, I do all sorts of weather related content, including videos like this, long range, talking about the heat, talking about the cold, talking about a snowstorm, a rainstorm, all good of all sorts of good stuff so consider subscribing if you can also if you would like to like the video <laughs> that'd be awesome so right now we're starting off with a bunch of springs that i've compiled okay, you can see that we're chilly so 2019 uh, last year 2018 2014 2013 2011 2009 2008 2003 2002 i only went for the past 20 years because that's usually the most reliable data within the last 20 years as uh, maybe the it's the least amount of climatological change during that time and you can see that there's not a lot of room for error. But uh, if you're to look at the map, the anomalies, you can see that there's a huge shade of purple over Minnesota, North Dakota, um, South Dakota, and into uh, into Wisconsin, Michigan. It's just a very cold area. So you know this basically shows us that these springs have been really cold. And obviously, if you were to compile all these cold springs, it will it will be looking you know it will look very aggressive as it's just one cold spring and compile than another cold spring with another cold spring so you can see that the anomalies are pretty striking again this isn't you know the intervals by which it goes down uh, by is uh, are not really great they're uh, 0.3 so that's not really significant but over a course of so many years that is basically the equivalent of you know um, uh, a 8 degree range within a month so this is very significant and you can see that it's only warmer across the south and southeast and that's what this winter or this spring was like so I only picked springs that were similar to the spring to make it a little bit more accurate. Okay, and again, this is mainly for the fun of it. This isn't really to predict anything, any winter. Um, it's just like what impacts may it possibly have. Uh, I'm not even going to really probably factor this into the winter outlook, like I mentioned before, as it usually is just, you know, too speculative. It's too, um, too, I guess, it's just too much of a speculation. But uh, you can see cold springs. And what did the result as, and uh, you can see those same exact years, 2020, 2019, just a year ahead because February is the last day or last month of this time frame. And that is uh, the following, you know, the, the preceding, I guess, spring that happened was this. And now the year after that, you can see this is what it led to, the winter. Really, is there a connection? Not at all. Not at all, uh, really. There's a little bit of cooler areas across the north, across uh, Michigan, into North Dakota, into Texas, into parts of Florida and Georgia, but it's it's really all over the place. There really isn't a connection. So, you know, I'm not saying that there hasn't, that there isn't you no know, connection in any of these winters. You know, there's probably a winter or two in this, in this file where, let's say, 2010, uh, or 2009 was a cold spring and it was a cold winter following that um, but you know say 2015 was a cold spring and following that was not a cold winter so uh, you know overall the average is out to no really uh, correlation maybe a bit cooler but it's really the anomalies you can see are just so light and scattered that it's really just uh, it's just not enough 
uh, to make a conclusion other than maybe warmer in the west possibly but that's again that's just a really long shot but um you know i could leave the video just at, as this and tell you you know to subscribe and like the video and see ya but i wanted to include a couple more things so I want to show you what uh, an example of a spring that was a cold and a winter that was cold. So this is March through June 2018. So this was two years ago. Uh, exactly two years ago we just passed. So if you were to look at it, you could see there was chill across the north. And it was generally chilly across the eastern U.S. Except there was a couple of warm spells that kind of made the anomalies go a little bit out um, of the blue. So it was more of a neutral color, just the white. But you can see it was definitely warm across the south, which has been the case this year. And you could see that uh, it was more uh, cooler across the northeast, which, again, this year was very similar to that. And you could see for the winter, December to the February of that of that winter, 2018-2019, you can see that the cold air did prevail across the northern U.S. and especially across Montana, North Dakota, and South Dakota, into Minnesota, and it was a bit warmer across the southeast. However, um, this is just one winter. Um, I, I don't think I have an example here of a, because uh, I showed you an example of a winter that does correlate. Uh, there's a, an example of winter that does not correlate is 2015. 2015 spring was, uh, sorry, yeah, the 24, 2015 spring was very cool, but then um, the 2016 uh, uh, winter was, 2015-2016 uh, winter was not cold at all, so the correlation is pretty weak, but it, it is there, um, and in some, in some cases, like this one right there, but that doesn't really give us the right to say, oh, because of this case in 2018, we could say this winter is going to be cold because of a cold spring. That is flawed in many levels, okay, and every word of that sentence is like wrong, basically. So again, I showed you this. Now let's move on to uh, okay, this was uh, this was March through June of 2017. You could see uh, this is just one spring, 2017, and there was really oh yeah, this is an example of a winter that didn't really correlate. Sorry about that. I forgot that I had this. Uh, March through June 2017 was a very warm winter. You could see our very warm spring. You could see not much going on in terms of the cold. It, there was some pretty extreme cold to the north, but just north of the border. Mainly, this spring was known for being extremely warm. And you could see that the west was warm, the east was warm, excluding parts of the extreme northern U.S. Otherwise, it was very warm. And uh, almost every part of the country is in yellow, except a few percentages. And then now let's look at the winter, December to February 2018. You could see that it was cold. So, you know, this correlate. This does not correlate on a, another level. You know, because we could have a warmer spring and a warm winter. We could have a cold spring and a cold uh, cold winter. Or we could have a warm uh, spring and a cold uh, winter. So, you can see this winter turned out to be pretty chilly. While, while it wasn't uh, really uh, too awfully cold, you can see there was a few spots of above average, mainly across the west. It was still uh, pretty chilly across the north and especially across the south as well. And definitely not uh, known for its heat like we had this past winter. Now, this still doesn't give us enough justice to call this winter, uh, you know, uh, cold based on the spring. But it gives us an idea that, um, you know, there is sometimes, there sometimes lies a correlation, sometimes there doesn't. Sometimes there isn't. So, uh, this, you know, this whole spring to, well, what does a cold spring mean for winter? Overall, the summary is it doesn't really mean too much, to be honest with you. Um, if if you, were to, you you have a much better chance of looking at other factors like the El Nino, La Nina, neutral, and getting that right versus this, then you may be wondering why am I showing you this? Just so you could know. If someone brings up, oh, it's been a cold spring, it's going to be a cold winter, that does not necessarily correlate. Uh, uh, last year, I thought there was a stronger correlation, but after trial and error, um, through uh, many uh, mistakes and failures, I learned that it does not necessarily correlate and after doing more research. So, you know, getting better every year at this, but it's a slow progress. Now, I also wanted to show you precipitation as uh, this thing is one thing that did kind of correlate, that a wet spring did kind of correlate to an overall wet winter. But I don't know if this is to do with maybe, for, you know, some sort of climatological, uh, climatological change. Um, maybe it's to do with just a trend in uh, wetter, uh, wetter years you know overall because i remember last year we've had all 12 months above average precipitation other than december so this is you know i mean usually more precip indicates a more snowy winter like this winter we had uh almost average snowfall but if you look at the temperatures they were out of the out of the 
you know, roof above average. So that doesn't really usually go together. But because of how much precipitation we had, there was enough chances for snow. Now you look at this March through June of all these uh, of all these wet uh, springs, and they were also chilly. Uh, you know, they're, they're the same winters that had the chill, um, or the same springs that had the chill. So it was like cold and wet springs. You can see this is what they left. Um, overall combined into a composite a little bit below across the west and the north but uh, quite a bit uh, ab uh, above across the eastern and central United States. How this correlated to uh, the winters of that you could see December to February um, it kind of maintained itself. You could see the west was generally a bit uh, drier and the east and south was uh, just a bit uh, more wet so um, I guess, you know, this is probably the one, uh, the thing that correlates the most, that if it's a wet and cool spring, you may see uh, more of a wet, uh, more of a wet winter, but not necessarily a cold winter. So uh, we'll have to see. And a wet winter, you know, being, it could be also snowy um, if it's cold enough. Um, but uh, that's, you know, it's just a speculation. I thought this would, I'd do this for the fun of it for you guys, since you guys like, like these type of videos, and so do I uh, making these type of videos, so... Um, hopefully all is well. Hopefully you could subscribe to this channel if you would like. Um, and I'll see you guys all in the next episode. Hope you enjoyed. See ya.